Greetings. Today we're going to talk about solving a linear program using the power of Excel. Now as you can see, I've already solved this linear program by plugging it into Lindo. Here is my answer, which I then copied and pasted into Notepad because Lindo likes to close sometimes. But you can see my objective function here at the top. It's a maximization problem and it has five variables. It's got three constraints here. And here's my solution. Z is equal to 16.5 and the values of the different variables. Okay, we'll come back to this later. Now let's take a look at our Excel spreadsheet. To save some time, I pre-populated this spreadsheet with the information from the LP. So here you can see our zero, it exists as C, and our variables are labeled at the top, X1, X2, through X5. We have our constraints right here, the three rows of constraints, S1, S2, and S3. And we have our slack variables appended to the side here, S1, S2, S3. And we also have our identity matrix. And we have our right hand side. Now, right now, this is, as you know, in the beginning with an NLP, this is going to be zero in your initial tableau. But we're not going to type those numbers in. These numbers are all going to be derived using formulas here. And oh, I forgot to delete this. That's okay. This is a. Uh, this will eventually correspond with what we have up here. I just took this from something that I used last semester, a completed matrix that I did, and I'm just going to redo it now. So ignore that for the moment. But these are this is the information that we need to have below for each step. Okay. So what we're going to do to get these values uh, to appear as we would need to in the next next tableau in the series is first we will get our value of B inverse, which is the inverse of this matrix right here. Currently it's the identity matrix. So this is not going to change, but we need to use a formula here. So we highlight all of these cells here where we want B inverse to appear. Then we will type in the equal sign M inverse and as you can see it, it comes up so we just have to double click on the option M inverse and we highlight the matrix that we want the inverse of. Then we hit control shift and enter. That is like super enter. You don't have to do this for every equation in Excel, just the more complicated ones, but I like to make it a habit to do it for all of them so I don't have to worry about which one I need to do it for and which one I don't. Okay, so there, as you can see, it appeared, and it is exactly the same at the moment as B, because it's the identity matrix, and, and that's what it's supposed to be right now. But now that we have that, we can start to populate our other cells. So we have CB, B inverse. So we will highlight these cells and then we will type in the equal sign M molt. That populates for us after we type in the first two M's. And then array one we highlight, which is C sub B, comma. And then B inverse, which is our second one. As you can see, the first one is highlighted in blue, and the second one is in green. Then we hit Control Shift Enter. Right now, that gives us all zeros, which is what we should have. So we're going to highlight B inverse A next. We're going to do the same thing E, I'm sorry, the equal sign M MOT. And we're going to highlight B inverse first, comma, A. And then we will hit Control Shift Enter. Now this, because we haven't changed anything yet, is going to give us the same thing as well. That's good. That's what we want. Here we're going to do B inverse B next. 
that will be oops, that will be the equal sign again and molt and then B inverse comma B control shift enter that gives us the same thing again now here we want C sub B B inverse times lowercase b. So what we're going to do, here we have c sub b, b inverse, right? Now here we have little b. This, this already has the first two matrices that we wanted to multiply in these three matrices. So we're going to use this one and this one to get the result that we want. So again, we type m mult. Highlight the c sub b, b inverse comma, little b, control shift, enter, gives us a zero, which it should right now. Okay, I saved the most difficult one for last, which is c sub b, b inverse a minus c. There should actually be a set of parentheses around everything that's being multiplied here, but there isn't. That's okay. We know what to do here. So next we're going to highlight our target cells. We're going to type the equal sign and mult again. And this time we're going to use the original C invert, I'm sorry, C sub B, comma. And then we're going to use B inverse A. Now this is where it differs. Instead of just hitting control shift enter we're going to close out the parentheses and we're going to add some cells to subtract by which is all of C now we hit control shift enter and we have the negative values of the numbers that exist in our C cell this is what we should have here so the little c basically means that we're subtracting this cell of c from each cell of of the the matrix down here. So that's that's what we have to begin with. Now the next thing we do, we can look at this and see that our entering variable is going to be x sub 2 because it is the most negative variable remember this is a maximization problem so we have our entering variable and as you can see I typed it down at the bottom most negative in C sub B B inverse P minus C that's just another way of saying what we what we have here and to find our our variable that's going to leave here one of these variables is going to leave to find our leaving variable what we're going to do is find our min ratio now I have some cells down here called min ratio they're empty we can use Excel to do this as well so what we will do to find our min ratio is to divide B inverse little b here by our x the coefficients of x sub x sub 2 and that will give us the min ratio of course there's a zero here you can't divide by zero and we know this so we can go ahead and enter our double dashes here I'm gonna get a message who cares okay so we know that that's not going to work and we have a negative actually this one is given to us because we have a negative in s sub 2 so dashes again enter and that all that leaves really is s1 but that's fine just so you can see how it works this is a more easy one to do we just hit that cell the forward slash and our cell here control shift enter three and a half all right so our entering variable is x sub 2 and our leaving variable is s sub 1 
because of the min ratio. All of that information is right here. And again, our min ratio is three and a half. Now, one thing I will point out here that I had already done as well is when I formatted these cells, I formatted them to be in fractions. As you can see up here, I did that by highlighting this cell in the corner here that highlights the whole page and hitting fraction. That's how I did that. It's already been done, so I'm not going to click it now but you want to do that to make everything uniform okay so now that we have this information we're going to copy all of this control C go to sheet 2 highlight up here again control V that's everything that we had now we can make some changes according to what we learned in the previous sheet Again, our exiting variable was S sub 1. Our entering variable was X sub 2. So what we're going to do is highlight these guys, control C, highlight these guys, control V, and as you can see, we have some changes here. I'm going to delete the min ratio because we're going to redo that. Oh. We also we need to change this from S sub 1 to X sub 2. Just going to control C, copy that. So I don't have to worry about uh, redoing my nice little subscript right there. Okay, so now we see that our uh, minimum, most minimum value is, is corresponding to x sub 1 that is our and our new entering variable and we need to find our new leaving variable that is going to be determined with a new minimum ratio we have another negative number here so we have these two guys left x s sub 2 and s sub 3 our slacks so we're going to say this guy is equal to this guy divided by this guy. Control Shift Enter and we just drag the lower corner down to populate the lower cell. Our new min ratio and our leaving variable is S sub 3. Okay, so we have our new information here. Our min ratio now is 2, which corresponds to S sub 3. It is not optimal because we have negative values up here in our C sub B, B inverse, A minus C, or P minus C as it says down here. Our entering variable is now X sub 1 because it is, has the most negative value. And our leaving variable is S sub 3 because of the Newman ratio. Again, we copy. Move on to the next sheet. And paste it in. And we do the same thing again. We copy our now X1. Into the X3, S, S, I'm sorry, the slack 3 column. We have one negative value now, which is X sub 3. So we're going to do the same thing with X sub 3 now. We're going to determine our Newman ratio. see that number is a zero. We're just going to type in. Don't worry about that. So our min ratio is three, which corresponds to the variable for x1 right here. And our entering variable is x sub three because it has the most negative value 
there in the C sub B, the inverse A minus C. And now you can see that our leaving variable is going to be X sub 1. So we're just going to copy this. We're going to copy that and paste it into a new sheet. And now we can find our new min ratio. We're going to copy X sub 3 into that correspond with X sub 1. This changes it again. Now, look at this. We have no negatives in our C sub B, B inverse. A minus C. This tells us that our solution is optimal. Our Z value is 16 and a half. And this is actually X sub 3 now because we just copied and pasted, so we'll change that. So this is our solution. X sub 2 is equal to 3 and a half. S sub 2 is equal to 15 and a half. And X sub 3 is equal to 3. We go back to our notepad now and look at our original LP and solution. And we see that our Z value, or the value of our objective function, is 16 and a half for our variables, x2 is equal to 3 and a half, x3 is equal to 3, and slack 2 is equal to 15 and a half. And that matches the solution that we found using Excel.